It is actually quite hot tonight. Same down here, to be honest. It's surprising. Down, you're up to me. Oh, yeah, I'm up to you. I'm used to saying down to everybody. Welcome to this week's Warhammer 40k podcast with Mr. Competitive Necron player, Jekron. It's coming right up. Necrons! Okay, that's all right. I didn't say Ministry of Dice, but we'll do that right now. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Nick speaking, and welcome to this podcast. Right, here we go. Episode six is with Mr. Jekron from Ministry of Dice. Hello, can I call you Jack? Of course. We're Jack. friends, mate. <laughs> Hi, Jack. How are you doing? All right? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, Nick. How are you, mate? I am very well. Thank you for coming on the show. It's been awesome to... Uh, it is awesome. I say it's it's been awesome because we've been chatting about half now. already. But <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome to have you on the show. And of course, we have met uh, twice, and we've actually played we once yes. uh, at the Dominion War tournaments because you do mm-hmm. actually live quite far away from me in Wales, correct? It is a bit of a trip. Yes, thank yep. you very much for having me on, you mate. It was a pleasure to come up the first time, and um, like you said, we did get to play, and then I was glad we didn't get to play in the second time, to be honest. Yeah, well, maybe in the third time. Maybe in the third time. <laughs> okay, so there is a link, of course, to Jack's channels. I'm going to say an S on the end there because uh, Jack is part of the Ministry of Dice YouTube channel and he has his own uh, channel as well, uh, Jack Rom. Yes? Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah. okay. So I have a first question. This is a, one of my personal little questions. I've always wondered this. How come you called your channel Jack Ron as opposed to Jack Ron? Well, I was bouncing back around with it, and I wanted something that still sounded like Necron. It was just a play on the word, but because I was literally going between Jackron, Jackron, I just could not decide. So I asked the group members in the Ministry of Dice, and it more or less came to a vote on it, really, because Jackron just rolls off the tongue better. Awesome. Fair enough, fair enough. I just just personally wondered that was all. So, yeah. <laughs> of course, this show is all about questions. We have. Uh, ten questions uh, for you to start with. Five based on uh, your hobby, so we can find out more about you. Uh, and then five questions regarding your YouTube channels and also TikTok, because I do know you do TikTok as well. I do, uh, yes. It's quite yeah. like TikTok. So uh, we'll have a chat about that. And then at the end, we'll have a more chat about, well, it's, I think it's going to be about Necrons, especially with the new release that's uh, just come out. So, so yeah. Yes. <laughs> So let's uh, let's get to know you. Are you ready? You're in the hot seat. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Okay. So, how did you get into this wonderful hobby of ours? Well, it's going to be a familiar story for a lot of other players. I first started with the Dawn of War games on PC. Uh huh. Okay. It was literally a living room thing. My friend would bring his laptop over. I'd be on my computer. We'd play against each other. On the original Dawn of War, I would always play Chaos, and my friend would always play Eldar. Right. There's a little origin of my one of my hatred for Eldar in this game, (laughs) because he was so much better at the game than me. But then the Soulstorm DLC came out, and with it came Necrons, and that's where I fell in love. Okay, Um, yeah. I've never played Dawn of War. Can you believe it? Are you not? I've not played it, but I do know a lot of people that comment they got into Necrons because of Dawn of War. Yeah. It's huge. It was, I go back and play it now, and obviously it was, I'm assuming, first or third edition Necrons. So they're quite different. And there's no, there's no Scorpec Destroyers, or, and you've still got Pariahs in the game. Ah, right. Okay. That's cool. Which is it's really fun. It's the only reason I know what they are. Yeah. Because <laughs> I got. <laughs> Quite late but uh yeah that was basically it i played that really loved the game didn't touch anything warhammer related for about 20 years right. and then at the start of ninth edition uh, i saw the necrons were part of the uh intro box set yeah so that got me curious and i ended up getting it for christmas so okay. built it up did you ask for it or did someone just like Surprising. I mentioned earlier in the year that I was gaining an interest. I was like, I, I might have a look into this Warhammer stuff. And um, right. it just came totally out of the blue. So I was totally taken aback by it. 
Built up the Necrons, loved them. Built up the Space Marines, didn't like them. Couldn't find anyone to play with then, but that's a story I'm sure we'll come on to shortly. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And of course, we know that uh, you do love your Necrons. However, have you have you sort of had any other armies? Do you have any other armies that you also play at the moment? I do. I've got two armies, uh, primarily a Necron player, but I've also got an army of Orcs as well. Right, okay, the Greenskins, eh? How dare you? I can't believe it. <laughs> I know, I feel like a bit of a traitor, but I can't help it. I just love green. To, to be honest with you, I, I like Orcs, um, and I, I nearly did Orcs myself, actually. Um, but you know what it's like when you have a small gaming group? Like, uh, we, we, you don't want to have the same army somebody else has got, do you? Yeah. So we, we had a Tau player, we had a Chaos player, and my buddy, he had Blood Angels, and his second army, he went for Orcs. So once he had Orcs, it was like off the cards for me. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. You don't want to yeah. try and snap on someone else's toes. Yeah, this is it. I did enjoy playing him when he played his Orcs. It was always a fun game. But that was back in the days when Orcs were easy to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, orcs are horrible now, and of course, with the points reductions, I think it's going to be even more horrible. So I'm not looking forward to playing against them. She <laughs> It's it's funny because I only picked up orcs because I was looking for a quote unquote turn your brain off army. Something's just run, punch, kill, and worry about scoring later. If you're going to yeah. worry about scoring at all. And I've been playing them for about a year now. I started in October last year. And funny enough, we're in October now, this year. And I've just now finished putting together a competitive list for them. Did you paint them yourself? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 as we'll find out shortly, I am okay, um, yeah. a painter. Well, fair enough. I think that might take us straight on to the next question. So uh, how much time do you get to actually do hobby and also to play? Uh, well, to do hobby... Not as much as I could have. I do have time where I do other things as opposed to where I could be building, kit bashing or painting. Um, it's it's. I'm not really massively creative when it comes to the physical side of the hobby in terms of painting or building. I struggle to put the kits together. I struggle even harder to paint. But playing, that's where I absolutely love. I, yeah. I just love playing the game. Up until recently, I was actually playing about twice a week. Right. But we had, where the Ministry of Dice was based, was above a shop in Barry, Spawn Point Collectibles. But their shop in Barry had to close, so we had to find a new space. And we've got one now, everything's all right, but we're only limited to one night a week now. So I only get to play once a week, but that is a lot for some people as well. Some people don't even get to play once a month. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I think, I mean... From my point of view, in an ideal world, if I didn't have like all the commitments that I have, once a week for me would be about right. You know, I don't think I'd. At, at one point, uh, I was playing twice a week mm -hmm. um, for a, for a couple of years, but I think once a week gets you. You know, it, you. I think it's about right. It gets you fixed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm currently on about probably once every couple of weeks. You know, yeah. that's my average. I actually do feel quite lucky in that um, I enjoy like pretty much all of the hobby. So yeah. I enjoy the painting, the converting and the playing and the list building and everything like, almost equally. There's only one thing that I don't really enjoy, the law. I'm just not into the law. That's fair. I do quite yeah. enjoy it, but I understand it's not. It's so huge. I understand it's not for everybody. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people like absolutely love the law. That's their thing. Um, but yeah, that's that's just not my thing. You know, that's just yeah. the way it is. But yeah, like painting and playing, I like it quite equally. Which I think is a good way to be because, like, like you say, like if you don't enjoy the painting, then sometimes you might struggle with that. You know, and then if you own, if you don't enjoy the playing of it then obviously you're sort of painting and hobbying and then not experiencing the other side, you know, the hobby, so. Yes, yeah, yeah. I always look at this. You've got collectors, creators and players. And yeah. people blend between them, but everyone's one of them at their core. Yeah, yeah. Except for me, because I think I'm equally spread. You are, <laughs> you are the pinnacle of what we should aspire. 
Uh, so, you've obviously played a lot of games. What I... would you say is your favourite wargaming story from those games? <laughs> so, so, there are literally so many, because... Like you said, we've got such a big club, so there's, even if it's not one of my games, something epic happens at least once a week. Um, recently, we had a 20,000 point game between four players. Wow. Okay. How long did that take? Like a week to play that? Shockingly. <laughs> it, it, did, it did take us two weeks, but over the course of two nights. Right. Okay. But we had 5,000 points in Necrons and 5,000 points of Black Legion CSM against 5,000 points of Necrons and 5,000 points of Tyranids. Okay. And it, was, it wasn't it was even really focused on scoring or anything. It was just slaughter each other. Yeah. And it was absolutely glorious. But I think the big epic moment from the game was uh, the opponent, my friend, one of the guys in the club, Jason, dropped his monolith uh, in our back line. I thought you were going to say he dropped his monolith on the floor there, but that's, <laughs> that's not, nothing to be epic about. <laughs> um, yeah, he dropped it in our back line, and it, it didn't really do too much. And then it came back into our turn. Shooting phase, we blew it up almost instantly with a forge fiend. So I didn't even need to look at it. But it exploded, which also took down the Tyranid player's Trigon, but also deep struck in our back line. Right. And then that exploded, which then took down the Chaos player's Abaddon. And it just, it, a few other things around it died as well, but it just like, boomf, 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 cascade. Explosion. <laughs> it was oh, just amazing. I always try to give uh, one of my like epic stories. So I've got one for you today, but it doesn't actually uh, include Necrons. So okay. it a, yeah, it was a time when I was playing Tyranids. And the right. Timonid Codex came out in 5th edition, and it was the one where they had lots of units, but no models for them. Yeah. Uh, and one of them was the Mycetic Spore, as it was called then, the drop pod, effectively. Yeah. Uh, so I went out and I bought these, like, toys, like dinosaur toys, yeah. to stand in as drop pods. And, uh, you know, me being me, because they only, like, a couple of pounds each, I bought nine, because that was, like, the maximum, you know, I well, could get hold of. So I built this list around taking nine drop pods and it was it was basically like a horde army. So each drop pod pod had like 20 Hormagaunts in or 20 Termagants. I just went all out horde. I thought my buddy, my buddy, you know, he, when, he, when he sees this, it's going to be like, he's going to wait on what's hit him. He's thinking he was going to play Blood Angels. So anyway, on this particular night, I turn up and he's got Orcs. But not just any old orcs, he's got a horde of orcs. It was like 150 orcs versus 150 tyranids. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was an epic game. Uh, mm. I always remember one thing that happened in the game is he rolled uh, three double ones for the charge in the same turn. That was back in the day where a double one was auto foul. So mm -hmm. he tried charging me three times, he got three double ones. Yeah, so that's my little my little story. <laughs> Mind you, one that happened very recently, actually, last week. Not particularly epic, but it's a funny one. But um, I was playing against our club president, Stello. He plays Blood Angels at the moment. And it was Orcs. Orcs versus Blood Angels. And it was my new competitive list, which I've just finished tweaking. And I quite like it. It's a lot of bodies. So I just spread out across the table. I... I Turn two, while I was on, I was set. It was like, right, I've got three six-inch charges. I make these charges, and I've won the game. It's it's done. Roll the first charge. One and a two. No problem. That's a funny roll. One CP. Reroll. One and a two. <laughs> okay, fair. All right, well, I've lost that, so I'm not going to score that, but that's fine. I've still got a chance at behind enemy lines, so roll the trial charge on my truck. It's like a yeah, it's a six-inch charge. Two ones. Oh. Okay. Panicking now. Last charge. I'm not going to fail the third six-inch charge. I can't remember what the roll was, but I did not make the six-inch charge. <laughs> Game-changing, isn't it? That type of thing. It's funny how... Like, people say dice tell stories, but it's funny how 
the game can shift so quickly in one phase like that just because of a few rolls it's 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 why the game is so fun it stops it from getting too stale yeah yeah and that always i don't know if you notice but when like a bad roll happens it's usually all at once like in one turn it's not like a oh. random ba- random roll here and there it's like that hold of the turn everything just goes wrong <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same as you with the Locust Heavy Destroyers. The amount of times I've rolled three twos is uncountable. It's, yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, so obviously we've got uh, the Orcs and the Necrons for you, uh, but do you have any other plans or hopes for another army? I do, actually, and it comes quite in line with GW because they've made an announcement recently, haven't they? They have, yes, yes. And, uh, hey, <laughs> I plan on starting Empty Children. I had a funny feeling that was going to (laughs) happen. Yeah. Yeah. I've been curious about it for a while now, and the announcement just confirmed it. I'm like, right, that's happening. I'm I'm starting EC next year. I'm looking forward to getting, I'm going to get mine underway. Um, My current army isn't playable because I've got, all I've got is 36 Noise Marines and a Demon Prince. They're beautiful noise marines, though. I remember you showed me on the first time I came up. They are Thank you. absolutely stunning. So, yeah, I just want to get them on the table now. So uh, this is an ideal time. So I'm going to build up some demonettes. And the army is totally fluffy. I don't care what it does on the table. I just want to see it on the table, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be demonettes, demons. To be honest with you, I'm I'm liking the demon side probably more than the space marine side. Okay, I like so, that. Which is why we, my, my conversions, they're quite heavily done, it turning into demons, lots of tentacles and claws and stuff, and are quite heavily done. Okay, they're, like they're on the verge of almost being demons. That's like, yeah. that's yeah. my imagination. So yeah, that's that's my sort of uh, thought process, is just like all these demons just charging forward, backed up by these mutants, um, sonic weapons and stuff, yeah. So it should sure. be good fun, yeah. Okay, well, thanks for talking about your hobby. We're going to uh, move on now and have a chat about your channels. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, tell us a bit about your channels. So, um, first of all, what inspired you to, to start YouTube? Which channel did you start first, the Ministry of Dice or Jetcron? So I feel like this is becoming a bit of a cliche answer now, but... You inspired me to start YouTube. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I did start with the Ministry of Dice channel. Yeah. Um, because it was in the first, well, the first time I came to the Dominion War tournament. We just had a little funny moment in the game with uh, me, Rory, Kaiser, and David. And I just thought oh, everywhere i wasn't a youtuber at that point we had just spoken back and forth about lists and you made that vid- you made a video about a list that i'd send you a tip to a tournament yeah yeah that's right and that was my real spark to do one because i came to the tournament had an absolute blast and everyone was just having such a good time and it just seemed like god this is just a no-brainer I need to do this. And the drive home, Richie will tell you, <laughs> the drive home, I, I did shut up. I had so many ideas. I was just, what is it? I think it's a four and a half hour drive. And bless his cotton socks, I did not stop going on the entire drive home. That was good. Although I hear the second drive home, you just fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, parallel, <laughs> parallel to the second year when I, about half an hour in i did a, did a quick little live uh as we were driving and then i think a signal dropped so i was like right i'll just end that gone asleep gone. until about 10 minutes <laughs> i felt so guilty when i woke up <laughs> now not only of course have you got your two youtube, cha- YouTube channels which are linked in the description below so of course everyone make sure you go and check it out especially if you love necrons because we all love necrons necrons <laughs> Uh, you do also have TikTok, don't you? Tell me about TikTok. I do, yes. So I quite like. There's this like uh, stigma around TikTok that it's the devil, and I don't use TikTok in the terms of watching people too much. I quite I love TikTok for content because it's a really easy way to speak to people. 
I do a lot of battle reports live and sometimes I'll just sit out here live and just chat away to people while I'm kit bashing something because it's like I said, it's a really easy way to just talk to people who are also in the hobby, people who are yeah. just chatting away. You can then get familiar with people and you recognize them when they come in. It's just there's the whole community. I know you're really big on the community with it. And I feel the same way. It's hard to put into, wo- hard to put into words, which is not great for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find, because TikTok's supposed to be like for the younger generation, right? More so, is it like younger people on there that you wouldn't Uh, necessarily find on on YouTube? Uh, It probably is a different, we'll say, demographic to it. Yes, it probably is a lot more younger people. But the people who, I guess, come and see my uh, shorts or join the lives, they're not really that young. They're people like me who are just on TikTok doing a bit of hobbying or showing a game and... They just want to have a laugh while they do it, really. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. I mean, I did try to... I did install TikTok once on my mm. phone. Uh, I must admit, it was quite some time ago, probably about seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. I installed it on my phone. That day, I came home from work, took my shoes off and, like, sat on the stairs because my stairs was right by the like, pantry. And I had a quick look at TikTok. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Looked up. An hour had gone past. And I thought, yeah. no thanks. And I just deleted, yeah. uninstalled it, uninstalled it. I thought, no, because that was just like, I just wasted my time just looking at like nothing. Yeah. Um, so, it's yeah, I do. Big scroll hole. Yeah, I do have like an account on TikTok, but I, I don't like site, don't go in and have a look at it or yeah. anything. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, but it's funny. Well, obviously, always... now YouTube, of course, are doing it anyway, aren't they, with their YouTube shorts and stuff? So they've gone yes. a bit down that route. So yeah, that satisfies my need. <laughs> um, I always say that I, I don't go on TikTok to watch stuff as if I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't use TikTok. But then when I go on YouTube, I just press shorts and I'm, I'm, I'm there for an hour. I'll, I'll yeah. completely lose myself to it. And I yeah. use the excuse, like, oh, I'm just looking at, you know, other shorts and I'm getting inspiration. It's like, no, I'm just stuck in a scroll hole. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> how is the or how are the channels doing at the moment? Your channel and Ministry of Dice. Uh, don't get me wrong; they are they're small channels. Um, yeah. Ministry of Dice is just over four fifty. No, uh, sorry, Jekron is just over four fifty subscribers, and Ministry of Dice is like one fifty or something like that. Okay. So we are very small channels. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> we did start a year ago at the last Dominion War tournament. And I can't even say that it's been a year, so that's why we're small, because look at Warhammer Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> They're blowing right up. But no, it's, we don't focus... Well, we haven't really got the capability to focus on doing dedicated battle reports yet. Ironically, with a club with so many members, it's hard to pin people and tie people down to yeah. its filming, because as you know, it's not an easy thing to film a battle report. No, especially if people are going to the club to play games. They're probably they're not going to be going to the club to, to make YouTube videos, are they? So, yeah. Not, yeah. yeah. Well, when we film battle reports, when we get the chance to, they, that's nothing to do with club night. That's People come there to relax, unwind, and just roll some dice, have a laugh. But yeah. we will have, we'll dedicate a day away from that if we're going to film a video. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Uh, what do you enjoy the most about your channel? I suppose it's the community again, to be honest, because, like I said, jumping on a TikTok live or seeing someone with a, a funny comment, it's just that, like, there's that little boost of oxytocin from it, isn't it? And then you get yeah. to talk to somebody. And uh, feedback as well, don't you? You know, you might come up with some sort of list idea and somebody throws in a little thing, you think, actually, that's a good idea, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. something I will do is I'll sit on TikTok during a live and I'll, I'll just be building a list on another phone. I'll talk about it, and it's nice when someone else goes, what was I building an orc list the other day, and someone said, try using a weird boy for scoring with putting in boys, and it was like, why haven't I done that yet? You do get those little ideas from it. Yeah, yeah, that's always good. Uh, what goal would you say you have for your channel? Goal-wise, I'm not, I'm not really sure, if I'm honest. We're in a bit of a floating in the water. I'm still trying to figure out what it is exactly that we are doing. We, I re- we regularly put out shorts of our club nights and what games are happening and what's going on. 
And like I said, we try and film a battle report when we can. With us getting this new location now, it's looking a lot better for us to have set days where we can start filming battle reports and really start getting some content out. So I think that my goal for next year is really just to get as many battle reports out as I can. Yeah, yeah. I suppose that's the thing, isn't it? It's, it's being consistent, but also being consistent with the content so people know what to expect. I think that's probably why uh, Warhammer has done so well, is because yep. every video is the same. It's those two guys in a really nice setting, high quality video, great sound, chatting, like two friends chatting about Warhammer. Yes. And yeah, yeah. every video is the same. You know what you're going to get, don't you? Yeah, when you so click it, that's, that's exactly the key thing. Yeah. Oh, they're doing it fantastic. I love watching the podcast. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're great guys. Mm. So, obviously, you sort of, I suppose, you've touched on this really, but uh, do you have any like video ideas uh, that you, you'd like to do? I've got a good few, to be fair. We, before we started really doing content, we did this like funny narrative uh, Facebook Live uh, game. Uh, Traz in the Infinite's Bogus Adventure. And it was a set game where we were set on Terra and it was basically Traz in trying to steal the Golden Throne. Right. Uh, various, I won't say too much about it because I would like to actually redo it as a full video because I love those little stories you can tell, especially with Necrons, characters like Traz in who can just pop in and out of little things that are happening every now and then. You can get some yeah. real narrative events from it. And that's where I quite agree with yourself. You said this on a video recently about bringing the fun back to 10th edition. Yeah. That's what I want to start to try and start doing more narrative stuff, maybe a crusade campaign or two, something where there's lore and story and you can actually follow it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the best games I have like I've said previously, is the fourth edition missions with really wacky missions. Uh, there's one mission where you have like a line in the middle of the table for one deployment and then the opponents deploy on the sides and they have like hidden um, hidden deployment. So, you know, you write down on a piece of paper what units are where. And it's like Gene Steeler. It, yeah, yeah, and the idea is you, you've you got to basically like do a conga line. You've got to basically get off the board edge before you get killed. And the more units you get off the edge, the better you score, or the more you score. Yes, yeah. Hello! Yeah, I, I really do love those 4th edition missions. Just like weird, wacky stuff. And you, you go to play. You're not going there to win. Yes, you're not going there yeah. to lose. You're going to play something that's going yes. to be really cool and really fun. You're so going that's... to be part of a story for a couple of yeah. hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's what I really love. Yeah. Okay, well, we whizzed through those questions, which is quite handy, to be fair, because now we're free to uh, talk about Necrons. Lovely. <laughs> Uh, obviously, um, well, from when we we're recording this video yesterday, we had the uh, new points and obviously the new uh, RATA stroke FAQ. Yes. What did you think? I'm honestly, this is interesting. It's the points changed where it's not too much has changed, but it's made the biggest impact in my head. I'm, in my head, I'm suddenly like, right, I want to run car park lists, three, three Annihilation Barges, three Doomsday Arcs, a Command Barge. These weird lists are popping into my head, and I'm like, right, okay, this is this is quite nice, actually. I'm, um, I'm sort of a bit sad, to be fair, because I read a comment on Facebook, and he goes, oh, I'm going to kick out the three uh, Triarch Stalkers now, this, this guy did on Facebook, and I'm thinking... I'm already playing three Triarch Stalkers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I've been going for the Obeisance Flanks recently because I like the fact that it, it sort of pushed me to play the units that I wouldn't necessarily play, you know, not the most competitive type units because, yes. you know, A, I like to test myself, you know, on the table and mm -hmm. B, it, it's pretty cool playing, you know, units not everyone else plays. Yeah. And I'm just about to get onto a, I was just about to get into a rhythm with this new list I had and everything. And now, like, everyone's going to be playing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always say, at least you did it first. 
Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, of course, the Silent King guessing the truck keyword. We've been begging for that for like over a year. Screaming for it. I want to celebrate that he's got it. But at the same point, I feel like I, we shouldn't because he should have had it from the get go. Yeah, yeah. It's like, absolutely ridiculous. Especially like, his pictures at the top of the the, um, the Legion thing, the attack detachment. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, okay, you can use him, but it just doesn't benefit from the rule. Uh, well, and of course, imitate yeah. the Stormlord as well. That's brilliant. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Well, Command really... barge. That's a shame. Oops, uh, yes, yeah, it is. It's... It wasn't a unit I ran. In fact, actually saying that, I haven't actually run a Command barge in 10th yet. So it won't impact me too much, but it is. It's a change, like we said. Yeah. Within the Abusen's flanks, of course, you know. Um, he, he's like an ideal unit to have in that in that detachment. Yeah. You know, you've got the minus one damage stratagem on there. Then obviously, if he was an overlord or a, a noble, then obviously he'd benefit from the special rule. And mm -hmm. he's just he sort of fits into that list like thematically. You know, it's like he should be in that list. I feel. Yeah, yeah, makes makes total sense. It's uh, as you said, it's the perfect unit to run within what well, at least it was until now well yeah yeah well there you go so yeah that is a bit of a shame but you know okay we've got what we really wanted um yeah. for me imitate the storm lord because i think he he works really well in that list as well with the cp farming okay. uh you combine that with the my will be done ability as well um and you can make really good use of the stratagems and the stratagems like aren't amazing but there are a couple of good ones. Circumstantial ones, like the extra OC, yeah. that's that can come in clutch in certain moments. Absolutely, yeah. The, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank now. I, li I wrote in a Basin's Phalanx list yesterday, and I can't remember the strat. You've got you've the got, minus one damage. Yeah, the minus one's damage. Uh, then obviously you've got the, um, the the one which everyone uses that all the time, obviously, the re-rolls. Uh, re-roll to hit, isn't it? If, an object, if your opponent's on an objective. That's the bugger, yeah. Rerolls, yeah. Um, but rerolls if you, but the immortal ability bonus trap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you've got the fight on death, which for some silly reason is on a four plus dose roll, which I really, I think that's ridiculous. Very. Uh, yeah, when you've got an army like orcs, which you've got a guaranteed fight on death for two CP. And yeah, the, that's but, exactly what I was going to say. Just make it two CP. Yeah, hundred percent. That automatically happens. On it, or, you know, because you, a you've got to pay a CP for it, and then b it's only on a four plus. And so let's say I'm using some Lich Guard, and I play the strat and say five Lich Guard die, and oh, I, I have to roll five dice. So it's, I'm probably going to attack maybe with like two if I'm lucky. Yeah. My dice roll maybe one. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that's that. I think that that could be better but on the whole you know we've got some nice stratagems not overpower yeah. but nice and to, to have imitech there giving you all the extras um, i think you know that's that is definitely a plus point mm -hmm. uh, obviously the monolith went up in points one of the monoliths up there very 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 sad i was hoping it was going to come down yeah well at least the katans didn't get hit though yeah, that's, I think they've put the Katans in a sweet spot now where they're just pricey enough where you're not going to consider running too many of them. And a lot more players know how to deal with Katan now, I feel. They're not the big, scary thing that they were at the start of 10th. No, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, so obviously, yeah, Annihilation Bar just coming down. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's nice. I played obviously it was only a, a, a fun, friendly games, but I played uh, three annihilation barges um, in my like a four-way game and against Planet Forty K. They did actually put in some work. Those things. I did notice. Funny enough, just before yeah. we came, about an hour before we came on, I was watching the one ver just you and Carl the night before, and yeah. they put in some decent work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously they do lack an AP. That's the only thing, but. Uh, Against, you don't need to worry about that. Well, no, exactly. <laughs> Anything else from the the updates that um, caught your eye? Um, oh, one thing I did want to touch on so before we moved on from that was the the Triarch Silent King update. Oh yes, right. 
He's only just got the Triarch keyword. Yeah. The Triarch is on his model. Right. It, the Triarch itself is actually on his model, and he's only just had the Triarch keyword. Oh, I see. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I know. It's just like it's just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Still, so, I. It makes you wonder, did, have they just been listening to us and that's why they've done it? Or was it an oversight that they've only just bothered to fix? Part of me thinks that most of what GW do is actually on purpose. It's like, right, what we're going to do, we're going to focus on the like Canoptic Court, get everyone up to that. And then we're going to focus yeah. on the Hypercrypt Legion. And we'll, we'll just, we'll make that a bit bad. But what we'll do in like a year's time, we'll do a nice update and then everyone will want to go out and buy all those miniatures. I see what you see. Yes, yeah. yeah <laughs> Nicolate the game, so it's like, well, this one will be good. And then, no, 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 no. Yeah. You want that, you want the uppy downies, come and buy these. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, if no, anyone's actually, got we... an idea to you, you've played from, was it first edition or third you got into a Third it? edition, I started, yeah. yeah. Yeah, nope. so. way before me. I only started in ninth edition. So if anyone's got an idea and a little insight into GW's mind, it has to be you. I was going to say something, but I forgot what it was now. Was it? Oh yes. So not only have we had obviously all these rules updates and stuff, but we had the announcement of the new Christmas box sets, whatever it's called, battle sets. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. I have. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm drawing a blank on what's in it because. I never really l normally like the, the Christmas boxes. It's, I think they're good for people who are building up a collection of a faction, but yeah. I'm at a point I've got eight to 9,000 points of Necrons. Yeah, so you're in the same place as me, really, with that. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it's a Transcendent Catan, uh, and then it's got a, a unit of Lich Guard, uh, so a unit of Warriors in there. Okay. If anyone's got a Void Dragon, not a Transcendent Catan, sorry, a Void Dragon, of course, it wouldn't have a Transcendent Catan. Oh, they don't even sell the model, do they? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I'd like it more if the Transcendent Catan was in there. Yeah, you I could think have they'd a sell a load of them, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. No, it's the Void Dragon. So yeah, anyone yeah. who has a Void Dragon, they're not going to be buying this box set. No, yes, I mean, I've got mine right there. Yeah. So I'm good. I don't need a Void Dragon. No. Uh, so, yeah, it's obviously... Yeah, it's got a limited pill but maybe that's a good thing from their point of view because they probably only make a certain amount of these and you know what it's like they, they sell out like instantly on stuff if they had like a mega popular one they probably have enough to know that they're going to sell a good few and mm -hmm. not have yeah. any left over maybe who knows who knows uh but yeah i was um i wasn't that impressed with that to be fair putting a a mod it would be different if it was a big model that you could have more than one of. Because even if you had one, you might be tempted, wouldn't you? Yes, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Unless you want it for maybe to, to do a conversion. Could be quite good. Yeah, I could see it. I, I, I wouldn't exactly call it a conversion. I just kit bash mine a bit differently. He's only got the one wing. But you could turn it into a... Are you sure you didn't just break the wing? <laughs> That's... <laughs> <laughs> obviously i converted mine as well i don't know that anyone actually notices it when they see it but um i've got his arm in the air rather than down with the, the, down, with the yeah yeah with the spear i don't know why i think it's because gw did quite a few models like especially i think with the aldari models mm -hmm. if i remember rightly um the incarn is it the incarn or whatever it's called there's, yeah there's quite a few models basically with their they're holding a sword like this like yeah, yeah and it just reminded me so much of like all the models that had gone before i just thought no nah, i'm gonna try and change it uh, that's good fun i like, green stuffed in the shoulder shoulder and got all the muscles in there and his chest thing and now it's painted you, you can't even tell sometimes i forget that it's converted <laughs> <Those are laughs> the only really thing is his uh, spears like quite high so it's, it is more difficult to store because a spear sticks up more. <laughs> I was actually recently kept bashing some orcs and I came across the same dilemma because I wanted to have this big chopper hold, like holding it sideways in the air. And I did it and I put it up and I was like, that's going to be so annoying to, trans to transport around. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes but, I'll like, if I've got one like that, is maybe just magnetise it so you can just take it off. See, now yeah, that's... 
Richie in the club shouts at me so much because I don't mag any of my models. Last time I tried it, I glued magnets together. I glued magnets to my thumb. It was it was a <laughs> debacle. So should we talk about uh, some tenth edition questions then? I have have got one Necron question for you. Oh, okay. Interesting. It's not really big or anything. It's just I'm no. just curious. Curious. Okay. Your favourite cryptic to use on the tabletop? Oh, that is hard. Um, I think it's going to be the Technomancer because I've just used it the most. I would say, um, quite big in in ninth edition, wasn't it? Yeah. Very uh, big. And then quite big in tenth edition, really. Um, the Plasmancer is fun to play. I have played yeah. a couple a couple of Plasmancers before. The Chronomancer, I think, tactically is quite good, but I don't. It's not my favourite miniature. It's okay, no, but it's not my favourite it, miniature. It's not the best. I'll agree with you there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Psychomancer, I have one built, painted it, never played it. I can imagine. Yeah, that's that's the auto push to the side. I think. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. For now. For now, let's see if it gets any changes or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'd say the Technomancer. I, would, I think that's it just looks cool. On his spider, isn't he floating in the air? It yeah, cool. it's a fantastic model. It the healing plus the feel no pain. It goes so well with wraiths. It's it matched made in heaven. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have stopped playing uh, the Canoptic Court since the last like. No, nah. um, not because it made the it made it bad, but. It just so it made it clunky for me, you know. It yeah. was clunky to to try and score and stuff. That's what I that's I what I felt. I agree with you. Yeah, I feel like it's some point investments in in Canoptic. Was it would be perfect if Scarabs had one OC. Yeah, yeah. It's okay if you're within range of a Cryptek and all the rest of it, but surely a Canoptic Court that should be one of their benefits, you know. In the Canoptic Court, you get one yes, OC. Yeah, yeah. If you have your power matrix up, then uh, gain OC by one, or not for everything, but if you have no OC, you gain one OC. It would absolutely fix uh, Canoptic Core, and I probably played nothing but if that was the case, because back in ninth edition, Scarabs were the goat for me. They were my absolute favorite unit. I used to run three squads of nine. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember just... the days when you could take them in tens. They were units of ten. You could take them in tens. You could take them in tens. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then we had the Scarab Farm where you could like re re um, get the extra uh, get an extra unit from your from your spider in the set yeah. attachment. I think that was seventh edition. Uh, so yeah, I had sixty three bases. I've got twenty original Games Workshop ones. Yeah, and then I made a green stuff mold, a top and a bottom half of made out of green stuff, and then I green stuffed the Scarabs, made them all up. I oh, made like good. 200 I made of these like green stuff oh. ones and uh, stuck them all on the bases, got to 63 scarabs. Then obviously then we had more scarabs in the Indomitus box set. So yeah, yeah, I've got quite a few scarabs. So. <laughs> I've managed to work my way up. I've only got 40, but I'm at 40-ish. It's somewhere around 40 uh, scarabs. I'm just praying something changes with them. Like I said, they're my favourite unit in ninth. I want to use them in 10th, but because... Most games I play are normally quite competitive. Just don't put them in my lists. They don't really serve a purpose anymore. No, yeah, yeah. I think that's what happens, doesn't it? When you when you are playing competitively, it, it really does change your decisions, doesn't it? Oh, 100%. If I wasn't trying to play competitive games, I'd run three squads of six of them. I, st mm. I still love them. They are still one of my favourite Necron units. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so what do you think of Prior Nexus, uh, say, compared to um, the original uh, mission deck? Leviathan. And Leviathan, yeah. I I'll be str I prefer I prefer Leviathan. I do honestly. Yeah, I think it's, certain. Go Prior on, Nexus on. just feels very. Oh, okay, so I'm doing this action that turn, and that one's doing that action, and the next turn, oh, that's doing an action now, and that, and that. It just so many actions going on. Yeah, I mean, I don't know whether that's just from our Necron point of view, 
Um, but that's exactly how I feel. Um, I, the Leviathan, like, you just have to do... Well, we still called it actions, didn't we? But it wasn't like the actions as we know it now. Yeah. Um, no. And everything's different as well. It's like, right, can I score this? You've got to read it, haven't you? Like, can I score this oh, before yeah. my turn's finished? Because that's yeah. the ideal one. Now, or do I score it after your turn? It, it, it's, yeah. I mean, every single time, it's like, I've never had to go back to the card deck so often. Because yeah. like, we play on the Tabletop Tactics app. Yeah. And in the Leviathan, I pretty much had the secondaries memorized, so I never needed to check the cards. But yeah. that now, I'm constantly, when is this scored? How many units need to do this? Do I need to be wholly within a footprint of a building to do it? Yeah, no, exactly. I suppose the only good thing, though, is you can be a bit reactive. So if someone's saying uh, sabotaging a building, you've got the op- you've got the ability to stop them getting those points by obviously yeah. killing them. You can deny your opponent's points more easier i'd say and it, it it has kind of changed the game in the case of you want to leave more units around that have the ability to do that it's more of a risk play at that point leaving things that bit further forward yeah yeah exactly so obviously you keep up to date with the rules of course um yeah, yeah. what do you think of the frequency of the the rule changes um, especially as like a competitive player point of view do you think it's it's good that they are refreshing it and everything's as even as possible but or, or as you know do you still get naffed off the fact that they change it so much well i'm in two minds of it to be honest as a competitive player i, I quite like it it's as when you play competitively it can get quite boring quite quickly so it it adds a level of freshness to it there's new challenges and new ways to think about scoring Certain units go up in cost, so you're like, oh, right, I need to find another scoring unit or something to replace that. It's it's nice to have the change. But when yeah. you look at more of a casual sense, it's horrific. I've says. had members leave the club because they can't keep up with the rules changes. They just want to come along once a month and roll some dice, and then yeah. they won't come for a couple of weeks, and the next time they show up, they're told they can't do something because that's not how the game works anymore. Yeah, and especially talking about that as well, like especially for new players who are building their army up. For, for I know we've got a lot of models. You know, we if the rules change, like let's say Wraith, I'm playing Wraith, and well, Wraiths are no good anymore. But Scorpet Destroyers are great. Yeah, I'm going to get those out. You know, and I'll play them. I've got the collection. You know, I may not have like three units of everything, but I've got a good selection. Yeah, but if you're new and you're building your army up to say a two thousand point list. And so let's say you want to play Canoptic Court because you think it looks fun, I like the models, and you're building your models, you're halfway painting them, getting ready to play your first game of 2,000 points. And then this change comes in because some competitive player has taken three units of them at a tournament and won. And now all of a sudden your army's like totally changed. I mean, that must be like really disheartening. Oh, 100%. I can imagine it's, we've had players uh, complain about it in the club. It's, They'll show up with a unit ready to play it, and they're like, "Oh, didn't you know the points change? You're like 200 points over on your list, and they have got to take stuff off." It just—it's such a massive change for people who, because let's be real, this is—they call 10th edition simplified, but not simple. This is not a simple game. There's a lot of rules to get your head around, yeah. and for people who don't have the time to stay regularly updated with it, they're going to get lost in the, the sea of rules yeah and that's the thing isn't it? Isn't it the game itself isn't complicated or hard or no it's the fact that it changes so much if it was just 10th edition came out we all know our codex you get to know the stratagems and what other people have but it is that constant change which yeah. makes it complicated or makes it harder to keep up with and, and obviously learn yeah Obviously, updated my app with the points changes, and then half of my lists. It's like, oh, I'm 65 points over now. Yeah. My one, my 1,000 points Hypercrypt Legion list, which I had, which had quite a few destroyers and heavy destroyers, that that went up 60 points. Mm. At a 1,000 points, like, that's rate, a lot. But that's a lot of points. Yeah. You know, I've that's got to drop. Next. Yeah, maybe I've got to drop like a destroyer or a couple of destroyers, a couple of heavy destroyers or whatever. It's like, it's, it's quite big. It is quite big. Uh, but yes, yeah, it's... it's... I 
I full well expected Locus Heavy to go up in the last points update. Yes. It didn't happen. So I was like, oh, okay, we got away there. And then this one, it's, it's, it hurts even more now because we had it for a bit longer. Yeah, we've had it a long time, haven't we? But it's those little points where you're like, oh, my list is 10 points over. Yeah. It just... and it's not it's not easy now in the past like oh 10 points over that's okay i'll drop i'll drop one immortal from that unit yes because yeah. you can't it's like oh now i've got to drop that whole unit and then i've got to take another one to replace it that's not quite as as expensive and then yeah you miss being able to pay five points for a gauss cannon or if i was five points over just go oh i'll just take that off and run the uh tesla yeah, cannon yeah no exactly yeah yeah so it's, it's, it is interesting. It is interesting. And obviously, I can. I think everyone, everyone, no matter whether you're competitive or just a casual player, can see it from both points of view, you know. And it, it, But it, I feel like it's almost like we need two versions of this game. We, we, yes, we need a competitive game that is updated and rules checked and every, all the rest of it. And then we need, like, this is your 10th edition, like, casual gaming play. Off you go, you know? <laughs> I've said it all. There's a few people in the club that have said it now for about six months. We need a competitive companion and a casual companion. Yeah. And yeah. there's no... there's. There, I feel I feel like with some people, there's some stigma between the two that casual players don't like competitives or competitives don't like it. There shouldn't be that stigma between either way. It's just with different ways of experiencing the game. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I suppose the thing is, though, obviously, um, where there's obviously a lot of content, like things on YouTube, you know, um, mm -hmm. most people tend to gravitate towards competitive play, don't they? That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it's like, it's the new hotness, you know? And a lot of new players that have come into the game. Sorry, Jack, what was that? Do you think that's because of how 10th has been built and engineered, like it's pushing people towards playing competitively? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and new players that are coming into the game, that's all they, they know. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how they're growing up playing the game. They're not growing yeah. up playing on weird and wacky missions like I was. They're growing up on playing as competitive, as straight and narrow as, yes. as they can get the game. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting so what new to the game going forward. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. Um, so, yeah, I think um, I, personally, I, I do love a competitive game. You know, I do really enjoy it. I love challenging myself. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes it's nice to be able to just rather than right, I'm going to play. I'm going to play a game this week. Right. What's the most competitive list I can get? You know, what are these rules changes? What's that? What's this? Sometimes you think, right, what do I want to play tonight. Oh, yeah, I think I might play Scorpet Destroyers. Right, three units of score pet destroyers. Right, what else? You know, and then you build a list like on what the the fun side of things. Yes, yeah. So I'm trying to like try to come in from both angles. Uh, Richard and I are, are playing competitive games and also some more fun games. And on the back of a previous video that I've made, um, I've come up with my own sets of Overlord rules as yes. well, which we're going to try out. Uh, they're all done. I'm going to need to make a video on them. Um, but I'm looking forward to playing them as well. I want to try them myself. Right, OK, that'd be good. Yeah, take them to the club and say, let's have a go of this and see, yeah, see what great. everyone thinks. <laughs> yeah, uh, so yeah, so on the back of Stevo, really, 6 plus Stevo, we're sort of trying to champion the fact that you don't have to play competitively. You know, yes. this game is fun when you're not playing competitively. Well, so it's more fun when you don't play competitively. It's you allow yourself to go back into the wackiness of the game as opposed to the efficiency and the... I suppose that's it, really. The, the yeah, efficiency. the efficiency. It is, isn't it? It's about taking... Optimising, isn't it? Optimising yeah. every point that you have. Yeah. Yeah. Making sure it's all going exactly where it needs to go, whereas casually, it's that's where you get to the real meat and potatoes of the game, I feel like, where you can allow yourself to just relax and have fun no matter what happens. Yeah, no, exactly. Obviously, I have been to a few tourna tournaments myself. Mm -hmm. um, I've always taken that slightly oddball lists to my to my tournaments. Um, so but that's for me, party where people see the list, they're like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, this is it." I, I had um, it was I think it was seventh edition. It must have been. 
um, and I had the the, the, the the decorian detachment it was, wasn't it? When uh, everyone had a four plus, we'll be back or um, RP in that detachment. If you took the detachment, um, and I had that's when you could take up to six units of flayed ones. <laughs> so I, I had uh, six units of five flayed ones, all uh, deep striking in or infiltrating. I can't remember now, to be fair, it was such a long time ago. Uh, but basically, I had this like weird and wacky uh, list. It was all MSU. So three mm-hmm. units of three wraiths, you know, small units of, of warriors. I think you could have warriors in units of five back then. Oh, wow. OK. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed that. That's like a challenge. So, I need yeah. to take a look at the Necron 7th edition rules, just because a lot of people say they were so much wackier, I guess. Yeah. They, they, the thing is, with 7th edition, they were very, very good. But you were very limited on what you could take. You know? Yeah. You had to take the Decurium detachment, and in there they had the the fixed units that you could take, sort of a limited thing. Uh, Then there was that formation, so you had the um, the spider one with the scarabs and stuff on there. Um, So you were limited in what you could take, whereas that is the great thing about 10th edition. What I do love about it is it's so much easier to list build for whatever yeah. you want to take because of the not the limitations of like right you can only have three heavy supports you know if i want yeah. three doomsday arcs three units of three heavy destroyers and three canoptic doom stalkers i can yeah you could 100 percent do that yeah yeah I, I honestly to my limited experience of the game so far only two editions my absolute favorite time was arcs of omen ninth edition yes yeah yeah, that's when we had good secondaries, though, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Very good secondaries. <laughs> but they, oh, yeah, at, at the Dominion War tournament. So I scored, yeah, 200 points in the two games with that Arcs of Omen. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It was basically, they just literally said, it's the end, 10th edition's coming, so do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> basically, that was it, wasn't it? Run <laughs> what you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, it's been fantastic talking to you, Jack. Thank you very much for for coming on the show. Hope you you enjoyed it. You're more than welcome. Excellent. Uh, As I said before, Jack has his two YouTube channels and his TikTok channel. I do, yes. (laughs) And they're linked in the description below, so make sure you're heading over and check them out. And, of course, here is the playlist with all of my other podcasts in, so make sure you check out those as well. And I'll see you in the next show. Cracking. Hey, perfect time then. Yeah, it's nice just going off topic. And I threw in a few of the questions, but it was nice just like chatting about Necron. So, yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's literally a case of, aside from the club, when it comes to, we'll call it reality, everyday life, I really don't get the chance to talk Warhammer. So if I'm able to sit with someone and talk about Necrons for an hour... You'll have to shut me up and get me away, otherwise we'll have yeah. it recorded. <laughs>